Slovenian National Championships 2020, the first UCI race post COVID. And we're going on to final climb. The final climb is about a 20, 20 to 25 minute effort, uh, 8% average. Um, and, you know, before this, they had a rolling circuit, but nothing too crazy. Uh, Pogaccia had a crash. So you can see most of the Conti boys are getting spat already. Um, and obviously, Pogaccia is one of the strongest riders, goes straight on the attack, followed by Rogic, followed by Mohoric and Yanni Brajicovic. Um, we also have Doman Novak, who also. Uh, managed to bridge to this group and everyone else is sort of just there riding hard. Um, stats for the climb is about 5.5 watts per kilo. For Moritz, who finished about 40 seconds down, um, you can see Moritz is there. So, you know, it's not uh, unbelievable uh, numbers in some respect, uh, but it's, you know, it wasn't a full gas climb. Um, and Roglic is looking super strong at the moment. He's just setting the tempo on the front. He sort of knows it's going to be him versus Pogaccia for the win. They've still got to catch the breakaway, but it was pretty pretty obvious that was going to happen. Uh, Brzezikovic, uh, I think that's how you pronounce the name. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, he is a Conti boy. Um, he used to race World Tour, but I think he got done for doping, I think, on something minor. But anyway, he's back racing. He is like the leanest bloke in modern history. Check out his Instagram. He's just got this calf picture, which I've never seen a calf look so lean in my life. Um, but he's super strong. He's been training very hard. I'm looking on Strava's like 30 hour weeks most of the time. And uh, he's there. So we now got another uh, another uh, rider, which is Doman Novak for um, Bahrain McLaren. Pogaccia puts his first proper dig in now um, after the initial one. And Moritz is just riding like full, but not mental. Uh, like he's not following every attack. Um, the other guys are all pretty similar strength, you'd say. Um, you know, like. Although he's a race for a Conti team, like Brzezovic has won the Dauphiné um, before, obviously quite a long time ago. And uh, obviously Pogaccia and Roglic are world beaters. I love this from Pogaccia, just whacking a gel. We've still probably got like 10 minutes of the climb left. Um, but yeah, whacking a gel. Luckily, this is quite good footage. It's not perfect because I had to screen record this and the screen record always ends up messing up, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, what are your thoughts about Slovenian national championships? Like how how it happened? I think it's um, pretty good that we managed to have our first national chance, and I think it bodes well for the season. Um, at least I think people uh, there could be races. But anyway, Roglic goes on the attack now on the sort of downhill false flat section. Um, you can see a remnant of the breakaway. Uh, one of the Conti boys and Tratnik start the road, and these guys I don't know what they're playing at. Like they just let him go, and it's like you're obviously strong enough. Like it's not to do with. Uh, not to do with strength, it's just to do with tactics. And then Novak goes straight round, I think, uh, and he says, "Cheerio, lads, we're we're going." Um, and then everyone's like, "All right, all right, all right, all right, let's um, let's go, let's go, let's go." But it d it did seem, especially for Bagatcha, this was a, a bit of a stupid error because he's now got to close. Like, I mean, it was probably got up to ten seconds now. And this is Jan Tranik at the front of the race. Um, he was in the breakaway, putting very very strong turns, and he's now off the front on his own. Um, with still a fair few kilometers to go, and Pogaccia, who's finally doing the effort that he should have done straight away, he should just close it down every single time. I, I, I guess he was trying to like not close every gap down to Roglic, but it was still a bit like not not ideal tactically because he's got a long way to go. But I think you know he, he um, the footage we don't see everything; we just sort of see the remnants. So like we see some of it, the sort of highlights, I guess. Um, but it's it's not stitched together very well. Um, Roglic sits on Tranik for a bit and I think he knows, right, cheerio lad, I'm going to whack it past you when I do. I mean, Tranik has just got to ride as hard as he can at the top. He knows he's not going to beat Roglic, so there's no point in sitting on his wheel or like slowing down. He's just got to ride full. And um, when Roglic goes past him, Roglic is going to go past him. Uh, it's pretty interesting there's crowds as well in this race. Like, I didn't know if there were going to be rules, but apparently it's all common to me. They don't have too many cases, so... Of the, of the old virus, so um, it's all good. But Roglic goes and just... Is just going full. Um, I don't know if he's going full. I mean, he, like, it's very hard to tell with him, but I assume he is because you can't, like, there's no obvious uh, swaying as if he is, but it's a pretty impressive gap that Pogaccio managed to close because there he is. Like, it was at least 10 seconds. So you think, like, Pogaccio is definitely super, super strong in this, um, in this finale. But I think Roglic knew pretty early on that he had the edge on Pogaccio on, in terms of, like, the final kick um, like, I mean, Pogaccio isn't, isn't a slouch in a finish, like, obviously I'm talking GC, like, climber wise but Roglic, that last kick, I mean, I think only sort of Valverde and Alaphilippe uh, are really fast than them at the moment, uh, the last, you know, in, in Mas de la Costa in, in Vuelta España, 
it was a uh, Quintana and Quintana let out Valverde, and Roglic was the only one who managed to get close to him. To be fair, so it was pretty pretty impressive. Um, like Roglic has got a super good kick, but anyway, Pogac is bobbing, and as soon as Pogac is bobbing, you know he's on a decent day, and he managed to catch up to Roglic. I see Roglic sits up here, I think, because he knows it's going to happen. Um, Pogac does actually have the KO on this climb, so I assume he lives quite quickly. He did about 400 watts for 23 minutes. No, 400 watts for half an hour on this climb, actually. Um, they didn't, I think they finished at like, I think it has balls for that sort of summit, so they didn't go all the way up to the top. Um, but yeah, he's, he's looking pretty strong, Pogac. His power data is always a bit lower, I've found. Um, he's like 66 kilos, 400 watts, it's pretty impressive, but not like mental for World Tour, but I think he's, he's stronger than that, um, for sure. And now they just sort of sit on, and they're not riding full, like, no one's coming back to them because that gap that Pogac had to close to Roglic, like when Roglic was going full, like, you know, that's going to put pretty much everyone in the bin. But Roglic is just setting a tempo here that's hard, but not crazily hard. It was steep enough where the draft is decent, but it's not absolutely mental. But I think this is where Pogac makes a crucial error, where he should have actually attacked very early on and kept on attacking Roglic. Because he, I, in my opinion, if he brings it to the line, he's going to get beaten every single day of the week. Like, Every day of the week, he's going to get put in the bin by Roglic in the final, like, couple hundred metres. So he has to attack him. And it, like, I guess it all just depends. Does he just want to sell a medal? Well, I think Pogac is one of those blokes who just wants to win or nothing. I mean, he's, he's already won three Vuelta stages and got a podium. So I feel like he's, this is, like, his only move. And he's in the saddle, and it's a bit half-hearted. Like, maybe he just was suffering. Um, and maybe he couldn't maybe he couldn't follow Roglic um, at the beginning or something. But I think he could have done. But I think more, like, I think he obviously is hurting. Um... And maybe that's why he couldn't attack, so he was just happy to sit on. But I think, tactically, if he could have attacked, I think that would, the best strategy would have just been, like, you know, attack, 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 try and just drop Roglic before the finale. Because I think if you bring him to the finale, there's only one result, as I said before. Um, and now Roglic is just sitting on it. We're getting towards the final part of the climb. And, again, sort of a surge out the corner, but it's not hard enough, and it's not, like... I guess it's just trying to wear him down, maybe, but it's not It's not really going to work. So I think, yeah, I, I guess just Pogaccio wasn't strong enough on the day, to be honest, because I think, ultimately, like, he's not an idiot. He, he would know that Roglic would beat him in the sprint, and he would try and attack him. But, again, with Pogaccio, well, most riders these days, they don't really show any emotion or anything like that. So you can't really tell, like, how they're feeling on the day. Um, obviously, Pogaccio does like to bob a fair amount, but not, like, crazy. Um, Roglic always looks super smooth and just... I find it really, really hard to read him um, if he's on a good or bad day. Um, but yeah, I think Roglic was in control of this. He knew, I mean, now he's just riding out the saddle in a big gear, just sort of like watching Pagacha and just knows that Pagacha goes just follow him, follow him, follow him, keep him to the finale. And I think this is like 500 metres to go. Um, so pretty much Pagacha, I think, knows it's now not, not ideal, pretty much leading him out. I mean, he's now starting to look over his shoulder and he knows the attack's coming. Um, I think they know that they had like 37 seconds to Moritz, so in the finale, so it was it was a fair like a fair distance. There there was no chance of them getting caught um, at all, and also the effort he would have had to make. I mean, Moritz probably is the fastest, but I think you know at the top of a mountain, I, I still would back Roglic because he's a pretty punchy boy. But we can see it starting to come to the finale, very very end, and Roglic is winding is going about about to wind up and absolutely rip it and. Uh, here we go, just wax it um, out the saddle, and Pogaccia doesn't get out the saddle, interestingly, he just goes full and just tries to chase, it. and he's doing everything, but I think, yeah, he could just couldn't get on terms, this motorbike, I don't know what was doing it, I mean, Pogaccia literally had a fucking draft, like, he literally had a draft to get up to Roglic, and he still couldn't close the gap, so I mean, you can just obviously see that Roglic was far, far stronger. And this is like a Dan Martin back in the day or Joaquin Rodriguez sort of thing where they just go from a long way out and just launch and just keep going for ages. Um, it's super impressive from Primoz Roglic in the first race of the, well, first race of the new season and the first race of his year, actually. He didn't race <coughs> before Corona. Um, so first race of the year for Roglic, first win. Is he going to win the tour? It could be a Slovenian battle at the top. We've had a lot of British riders win, but I reckon it could be the Slovenians t uh, dominating and maybe not Colombian like Bernal. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this tremendous stream. I'm very excited to see racing is back and I can't wait to watch every single race in about three months. It's going to be chaos, but we, we absolutely love to see it. So anyway, cheers for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and all that stuff and I'll see you in the next one.